So I've been asked to come here today to really talk about cybersecurity, how the changing landscape, everything's been happening. So one, some of the questions I'm going to be asking is, can you get in trouble by deploying AI incorrectly? Can your team get in trouble? Is there financial penalties even for the administrators? Another question I've been asked, when ransomware hits and all your backups are gone, what do you do? These are some of the questions I have to answer when I meet with the CISOs and executive boards, uh, with some breach councils across Canada. So for those who don't know me, my name is Rick Wu. I run the Cyber Resiliency for Dell Technologies. I do a lot of work with the governments, the training new people into IT, into cybersecurity. And there's a lot of things that I talk about when I meet with the execs and talk about future plans and how to make sure your organization is resilient. I'm going to share some of the lessons learned. In half an hour, I'm not going to have a lot of time to cover all of this. However, we're going to be at the booth over there in Dell Technologies with our partner Gallium, and uh, we can actually cover some more questions in more detail. So before I get started, there's a legal disclaimer that we always have to put out there, uh, forward-looking statement, blah, blah, blah. So. So what are, what are the questions I've been asked? Regulatory and changes, how, how that's going to impact how we do business, how we're going to implement IT. We're going to be asked about implementing AI. What are the risks? What's going to happen if we don't do it correctly? And what do we have to do when we implement it? And then finally, some of the other things I've been asked is recovering after an event. A lot of people were, were tasked, I, and I'll give an example of City of Hamilton. They have a technology that allows them to really bring up their, their organization after an attack very quickly. And months later, they still weren't able to bring everything up. And why is that? Well, a lot of the times is no matter what your plan is, after a first attack, all plans really fail. And that's what people learn. And they also learn other things, like you're not supposed to recover yet because they have to actually ascertain what kind of information was lost. And legal comes in and saying, hey, we actually have to do our PII analysis before we can even recover. And all these lessons learned affect when you can bring your business back up. There's, in AI specifically, there's been a lot of conversations. In Canada, we're taking a very uh, direct stance of having responsible AI, which includes inclusivity. That makes sure that our AI will not discriminate against gender, race, or anything like that. And every country is taking a very different stance. In China, they're taking robust AI. So, so it's very interesting as we're racing for the new AI, um, I, sorry, I, as a race for AI, we're seeing which country is going to come ahead, and they feel that this is going to be the next innovation in pushing their GDP and their economy higher. So there's a lot of money being put into AI. There's a lot of protection and risk associated with it as well. And there's a lot of laws. I, I've talked about green AI, the ability to actually make sure your AI is secure as well as running efficiently. And there's, uh, there's a lot of things happening in the US to make sure that AI is going to be operating efficiently. OK, so the, other than that, I won't cover a lot of these. Um, in Canada, we have also Bill C-26. If you haven't heard, this is coming up uh, very soon to be official into law. And the government took a very interesting stance as we talk to CISOs, we're seeing a shift where we're following the EU policies, which means that there's going to be more financial penalties to the individuals and to the people that run IT services. And the government has mandated that five sectors are going to have liability to make sure they report issues. They, mo they have to have really good a technologies being developed really good security to harden their environment. And they're good. because they run the key infrastructure for Canada, they have to make sure they could support any types of outages or anything like that. So these laws are going to come with strict penalties as well, as well as time frames when you actually get attacked to report on it, and there will be legal penalties. And some of these are going to be in the hundreds of millions of penalties. So this was really interesting. When I first talked about this, a lot of a lot of CISOs said, ah, you know what, we're not too worried yet. And now there's actual legal precedence. So if you talk to senior execs, they always look with their legal team to say, hey, is anybody getting sued? 
and if not, we don't have to worry about it, but now there are people getting sued. There's about, we, companies are getting sued for PII data loss. Companies are being sued by the Department of Justice, not reporting you have a crime, or saying that you're actually running really efficiently and you have MFA and you're following all these standards, but you're actually not. And there's penalties now, and there's legal precedent, which means that now everybody is interested. This is another slide I use when I talk to directors, and they talk about, oh, okay, what kind of government governance do I need and compliance do I need when I actually run our, our technologies? And this was what it was a year ago. This is what it is with all the new AI. Sorry, everybody's taking pictures before, and now I, 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 I got a new one, huh? Okay. So in that one, there's ADA. ADA is going to be the Canadian government's version of the AI Act. And this also has penalties, which means that if you're AI, if you're not actually record keeping, if you're not figuring out if it's causing harm to people, there are huge financial penalties. So these, these are a lot of deep discussions that we're having. How do you actually do it right? How do you actually protect it? Wow, protecting from what though? So if you guys are familiar with MITRE, it's a security conference, so I'm, I hope a lot of you are. There's the MITRE attack, and it talks about all the different points of how IT systems can be attacked. They created one for AI, the MITRE AI, uh, AI. So it's the Atlas, which covers about 82 techniques that they can actually break into your AI. And being able to deploy AI in a very responsible manner to make sure that you're in compliance is gonna be a huge requirement going forward. With that being said, what do you protect? Well, your AI system, and when I talked to one of the large insurance companies, their exec told me, Rick, AI is not just about a database. It's our business processes that are learned. So when you steal my AI, you learn how I do business. And that is a very interesting concept. There's, we talked about all the law, so there's a compliance requirement making sure that you have the records, making sure that you have legal protection now, which means as your AI keeps changing and it keeps innovating and it's learning. Well, it gave me an answer from four days ago and that was a different AI than I have today, which means I need to actually keep a copy of how my AI was trained at that point. Then there's also the workload state, being able to recover because as AI becomes a key part of your business and it is part of your operating, you have to make sure that you can recover all the states. And then you also have to back up all the stuff that keeps that data trained. Well, I had a PDF that told my customer this and I updated it with the new version. Well, I need that old version around. So these are all the lessons learned we're seeing from AI, being able to recover from it, being able to do all this stuff. And Really, if, you, if I want to summarize it, it's really about protecting the source of your information that trains your reg models. Uh, I'm not going to go into AI. I, I have a five minute where I train uh, board of directors on what AI does. If you guys are interested, I can feel free to stop at our booth with Gallium over there and uh, we can actually come in and present some of this information with you directly. But we really talk about how you protect your AI models and also all the inquiries. Because one of the key attack vectors also is different people doing different types of questions and you could actually figure out if they're attacking your system. So that is gonna be one of your defense mechanisms to figure out the queries coming in and applying new technologies on there to see if there's actually an attack for information or process or anything like that. And also for legal compliance, we all heard about Air Canada that one of the, one of the AI bots actually responded and approved the customer's discount or something like that and they had to legally stand by it. So you have to keep copies of that as well and figure out why it did that. So data protection has been crazy. Being able to back up everything and recover in such a different world because what AI does is it opens up your attack surface. Now there's something that you don't fully understand that's answering questions, whether you can actually have data loss or they can actually come into your system. So with all this, and then you're going to the cloud and you're applying new types of SaaS services, it makes the organization recovery really difficult. And here are some really cool stats that our friends at CrowdStrike actually sponsored. 25 days is the average time it takes 
for downtime after, after ransomware hits to be able to start recovering. So no one really goes, okay, we got hit, let's hit the bad magic button and restore everything. That doesn't work. There's so much, only hospitals really push this because lives are a danger, but everybody else, they have to go through a lot of legal precedents and double checking what type of PII data loss before they can start recovering, and then they have to figure out how to recover. What is actually a good copy? Did, do I restore yesterday's backup? Well, that might already have the tools in there that they could get in on. Do I restore the ones from a week ago? How do I know? So all these questions are where we come in and plan around this. Backups, when someone breaks in, 94%, they go after your backups because they know if they destroy that, and that includes your production and your DR copy. Everybody goes, don't worry, I got a DR copy. They go after the DR copy because on the systems, they see where it replicates to. So obviously, they know exactly where to go. And then, interestingly enough, they find 75%, there's no malware. It's actually people using tools and CVEs or vulnerabilities of existing production systems to actually break in. So how, what, do, what does Dell believe in creating a, re, a resilient organization? The first is always have a really good backup. Number two is have real-time detection. Because a lot of people say, oh, let's just scan the backups for ransomware. Well, you know what? They're already in, and they're doing a lot of stuff in your environment. Just relying on the backups to figure out if there's an attack is not going to be good enough. Eight hours later, after your backup is done, let's do a scan, and you know, maybe you can send it to the cloud in real time. You know what? That stuff's not going to work. What you need is to have synergy between one and two. And then number three, when all this fails, because with technologies and zero day, that's going to fail as well. In fact, our, our, our CISO is working with the Department of Defense in the US to, to, to create with other partners around here a zero trust infrastructure that can be deployed in the infrastructure for any customer to have additional security. So, how do we do number one? How do we make sure the backup is good? If you guys uh, have seen Data Domain, which is our backup appliance, it is basically you walk into two out of three companies and they're running one of these boxes. So it was built a long, many, many years ago with deduplication. If you're not familiar with deduplication, it is really about taking all ones and zeros. So every night you're doing a backup, a backup, a backup. If you have a terabyte, 365 days, 365 terabytes. That's a lot of data. So what we do is there's a patent, and we're one of the only ones with a patent that actually looks at the ones and zeros, and we only store as a shifts. We only store the ones and zeros one time. So that's the duplication. It gets rid of all that. So if you, an easier way to think about this, think about a library with all the books, and we dedupe on words. So the word the will only be stored once. So that's how we make a lot of savings. And because we do this, the duplication we were able to have a lot of savings. So in Canada, I just went through some of the call homes and I ran a report in Canada on some of the systems and we have about 6.8 uh, exabytes and we're storing it in about 100 petabytes. So that's through many companies across Canada. And I, I know usually you get marketing slides about US and everything like that, but I wanted to be more specific. In a hospital in Canada, we have about a 58 to one reduction uh, our big bank, which runs a lot of databases, has uh, 36 to 1. There's an oil and gas company that they run this in the cloud, and they have about an exabyte of data. And we're deduping it down to a petabyte. Think about the cost savings. That's a thousand times less. So this was really efficient. So, but when you do that, it's kind of dangerous. That library example, if you lose the word the, everything is going to be gone. So because we did this, we actually added a lot of resiliency onto the product when we engineered it. And it's meant to survive all kinds of attacks. And that actually adds resiliency today to everybody when the world has changed, when everybody's trying to break into your backup. So that self-repairability has actually made us one of the primary last uh, backups of last resort, which means we get your data back when everything breaks. So this gets deployed everywhere. We have a lot of those capabilities. And the ones I really want to talk about is supply chain. So everybody saw the exploding pagers? Yeah? OK. We, 
So what happened was that was a supply chain attack. They got in the middle and they were able to break in and you know, re replace a lot of the hardware to make them explode. Okay, and funny enough, just to sidetrack a bit, uh, the Canadian government and the FBI, uh, the, uh, CISA and all these folks have actually issued that China has been scanning our networks heavily in the last week and they're actually issuing orders to some of the banks to say, hey, uh, raise your risk level. There's gonna be some major disruption coming forward. So in time, when we look at supply chain, we also look at our backups and say, hey, what could actually harm us? The admins, the backup server, uh, the time. So uh, the key manager, if you attack those, you could corrupt everything. If, so we looked at all these and we have actual protection. We're one of the only ones in the industry that has protection against this. And I'll give you the example of time attacks. So I got a call, and this was seven years ago, I got a call from one of our customers was in the middle of the night and he was panicking and luckily I was still awake, I took the call and he's like, Rick, I need help. I'm, I'm like, hey, hey, it's been a while, how, how are you? He's like, no, 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 I, I don't have time to talk. All my backups are gone. I'm like, whoa, what happened? Why? And he's like, for some reason, the clock on, my, on the master server that tells all my backup what time it is got set seven years ahead. It's like, oh my God, I just realized what that means. It means that all your backups that have an expiration of 2010, it's 2017. Like all of a sudden, everything got erased. So everything got emptied. And it's like, and it, it trickled to the DR because they talked to each other. So what do you do? So we actually, with the DIA, our, our ability to self-repair, we were able to rebuild everything within an hour. And they were back. And then afterwards, I had a beer with him, and I said, okay, what really happened? Like, how, how did it get set? He's like, I was looking of when I was gonna retire, and I actually clicked okay on a time clock, and it set everything seven years ahead because I was trying to calculate how many years before I retire. And I was like, oh my gosh, but it's one of those where we have these built-in security tools. And having physical attacks, all this stuff, is really what we do with our technologies to have a secure supply chain. And Lori Petticante, who uh, is the CISO at RBC, said, you know what, there's two things. Number one is, I have, with OSFI, and that's the regulatory office for auto banking, they actually said, I have to make sure my supply chain and my supply chain supplier is actually all checked off before I can actually do business. And that's what the world's gone to, with, especially with the EU policies. And they're even talking about breaking down a CISO office to a process and an operations team. So there's a lot of changes that we're following in the EU. And when we do this in our side, we actually make sure that whether we talk to things that could break us or where we talk to things uh, that through delivery, you wanna make sure you have an appliance that you trust. And our systems, when you boot up, it actually validates the, the firmware, the OS, uh, the boot runtime, and even the hardware with digital fingerprints. And, it, and even the box itself has tamper-proof tape on it. So you know anything is compromised, even on boot up, that your backup is gonna be on an appliance you could trust. So really, number two, so we talked about having really resilient backup. I think you understand uh, what we do and how you guys can actually start securing this and go, Rick, you know what? I actually never thought about any of these attacks on my backup, but now let's talk about what we could do for earlier detection. So with all the Dell technologies and there's a lot of early detection, what we could do is we could take all the sensors and we apply the duplication as well on the messaging which means when your security team goes in and says, oh, I got 40 million this, and they start getting bored. They actually can't look at those reports anymore. So what we actually do is we apply AI on that, and we say, you know what, all this is a behavior of an attack. And what we can actually do is saying, hey, your SAN, this folder is actually getting attacked, which can allow our SOC team to go and look at the backups and make sure it's secure and we have good copies. So this is, built into early detection is built in, as well as the service that we could offer with our partners and everything like that. So those are the two pillars, but what about the third? When all else fails, we have cyber resiliency. Cyber resiliency is really about, hey, let's make sure uh, we can recover when everything breaks. And this, and Lori's comment was, we looked at Maersk, who's that shipping company, you know, if you guys like Lego, there's that big ship, so Maersk, does shipping and they got severely attacked and the only reason they were able to recover 
according to Lori, is that they had an Active Directory that was actually not connected to the network at that time. So what that means is there's three things we believe creates that final level of res restoration. Number one is immutability. Whatever you're writing has to be able to repair itself and cannot be overwritten. No matter, even if you're the administrator or you're calling the support team, you gotta make sure that for your critical backups, it is secure. Number two, it has to be isolated, as Lori said. It has to be off the network. Nothing can touch it. You can't have the guys already in your network being able to access this because that is, means that they could destroy it. And then number three is, I can, have a, I can have a thousand copies of everything. It's almost like I throw you a thousand tapes, go recover your business, which is what the city of Hamilton went through. Which one is good? Which one actually has all the tools that could actually reopen the door for everything? So you need to have intelligence to figure out what, what you need to restore from. And this is really the impact of it. The primary and DR is not good enough. Second, two copy is not good enough. You actually need, for your critical systems, you need this. Very interesting, uh, I'm gonna do a little quiz. I don't know if uh, we could get answers, but I was at an airport and one of the questions that came up was, hey Rick, I need to put my critical system into this vault so I can recover my business right away. So what would you think an airport's primary system they wanna put in is? Give you a second. So it is not the scheduling. It is not that board that says, hey, what planes are gonna be up? It's their parking lot system because a lot of the revenue comes from that. So every company is gonna have this unique service that they need to put into these vaults. And this is where some of these expertise and how to actually recover and how to do it correctly and can you do it and do you need to wait for the lawyers to check this off? What can you actually tell vendors at that point? All the stuff that we could help work with you and figure out a recovery plan. And one of the things we do when we put our stuff off-site is we do behavioral AI analytics onto that backup copy, which is not looking for signatures. So everybody out there looks for signatures. They scan and they say, okay, it looks like a pattern of something I've seen before. We actually do something different. So on the left, you see that's what everybody does, basic anomaly scanning, which is like, it's like taking a FedEx package and you're scanning it and you say, oh, two pounds, Yes, it is two pounds, you're good to go. That's not good enough. We have to look at 200 things in our behaviors, 200 activities that it looks like ransomware for us to detect it, and this allows you to recover a lot faster. So it takes that several weeks down to a few hours or a few days because we would already have that tag with our AI, your critical rebuild. And what we do, is very advanced techniques where we have 200 plus statistical analysis on every bit of your backups. So we know exactly when you have a backup, it's not a single file, there's millions of files in a backup because it's every directory, every file. We actually are able to tell you, hey, I could, these files are good, these four are bad. And we give you that checklist to recover your business right away. And this includes databases, which not a lot of people actually look into the database. And one of the hospitals said, Rick, my biggest fear is when they break in, they don't encrypt it, but they actually go and overwrite my blood database. So a patient that has an O positive is now a B, and we give them the wrong blood. So being able to have that early detection is really important. Really, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here is reshape the funnel. We're trying to put earlier detection so that things that are happening right away, we could actually stop it so the area of restore is slower. And then at the bottom with detection and incident response and all the tools you have here, you know, those are all reactive. Those are all things that determine in real time. But we're more of a what if all that fails? And at the bottom, that's where we really help in the recovery and making sure that you can bring your business up following all the legislations following all the protocols and governance of NIST and everything like that, following all that to make sure that we can bring your business back up. I'm gonna talk one more thing on my last slide here, is there's a big hack. Here's a way to contact me, okay? And everybody knows the QR code, so you can scan this and then link, link to me on LinkedIn and we could connect. 
So the biggest hack, if you ever see these on parking lots, people are putting stickers on top of those payment systems. So you go and scan, you're actually going to a fake website and you're entering your credit card to pay for parking or something like that. So how do we keep up? We can't. One day with all the, and you know, everybody's heard of the, the security advisor that almost got hacked because he got an email from Google and he ignored it. He's like, ah. He got a random phone call from Google and he's like, ah, fake. And then finally he decided to pick up. He's like, sir, we've been trying to reach you for a long time now. Like, are you, are you currently in Germany? We think your account is breached. We think your account is being accessed right now. So they're using psychology, creating this urgency. So they, they actually use multi-factor now. They're using email, a proper call, and this is pure, per perfect English, a phone number that comes from Google. And he's talking to them and he's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. They, are, they did try to contact me. I did get those emails. I thought it was fake. So he was about to click on the link, according to him. He's a security guy, so I don't know if he clicked on it. But he said, hey, I was about to click on that link. And then I asked him, and he repeated the exact same phrase that he said a few seconds ago in the same tone. And he tried, oh, sorry, can you repeat? And he said it again, and it was like, it's AI. So they're going to break it. With AI now, the only way to protect yourself is to use AI against AI. The only way to protect yourself is to make sure you have the right backups and a secure backup. We believe in having an isolated vault for your most important information and systems. And make sure you have the right plans and full understanding of what you need to recover from. So I want to thank Gallium for sponsoring us today. I hope this information was useful in half an hour. I can't get through a lot of this, but we're going to be in the booth over there. And if you guys need anything, let us know. Thank you so much.